the third talk on this series will begin to elucidate the spirituality of wholeness depicted through the concepts of way truth life way truth life are not independent concepts chosen arbitrarily but are the self definition of jesus jesus is the way he is the truth and he is the life to repeat what is mentioned earlier way to life are related with the three human faculties of will mind and heart which represent the complete person jesus the way is for the will jesus the truth is for the mind and jesus the life is for the heart the spirituality of way to the life presents first of all certain truths to be believed in secondly it indicates certain practical steps to be carried out and finally it also depicts the necessary sentiments to be cultivated together with the need to seek the blessings of the lord in prayer to understand this method better it is good to deal with these concepts of way truth life separately each of these concepts reveals certain truths suggest certain practical steps and portrays the role of love and grace we start with jesus the truth this method starts with the truth which is associated with the mind why truth or mind comes first the first reason is this the dynamism of life shows that it is the knowledge of truth in the mind that introduces a person to corresponding action and action leads to corresponding life once a professor at the medical college asked the students how much of a certain medicine should be administered to a patient with a particular disease one student replied 5 grams the professor did not say whether the answer was right or wrong but he went on with the lecture after 5 minutes the same student raised his hand and said professor i would like to change my answer the professor looked at his watch and said never mind your patient had been dead since 2 minutes it portrays the fact that the incorrect knowledge of the student led to an action and that action led to the corresponding result death there is another reason why truth or mind has priority in this method the reason comes from the teaching of jesus jesus said in john 6:47 the one who believes in me will have eternal life what one believes is truth belief and truth are associated with the mind and these lead to life i would like to give one more reason for the precedence of truth in this program of life it is associated with the mission of jesus jesus did not start his public ministry with giving examples nor working miracles but by preaching the gospel saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand repent and believe in the gospel so redemption starts with a change of mentality which is associated with mind and truth i have said that truth is associated with the mind so to understand how this method functions and how it leads us to wholeness it is necessary to understand the scope the power and the dynamism of human mind at first we specify the scope of mind mind has the scope of knowing the truth god created human mind for the truth it tends towards truth as its formal object and it is satisfied only when it possesses 
the truth jesus said in this regard if you live in my word you will indeed be my disciples then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free using the words of saint augustine in this context in a different way we can say our minds are created for truth and they remain restless until they find the truth mind should not only really know the truth but should also believe the truth and accept the truth the mind remains in a state of restlessness till the truth is accepted going a step further let us now think of the power of the mind the power of the mind is the power of thought the power of mind is the power of attitude in fact we are empowered or limited by the nature of our thoughts the greatest discovery today is that you change your thought or attitude and you change your life the i can't attitude has probably stopped more people from living full and happy lives than any other major disease i can't stop complaining i can't stop quarreling i can't stop being angry i can't make it in my job etc once we overcome the crippling i can't block by affirming i can with god's help there is no limit to what we can accomplish in our life this is the power of mind the dynamism of the mind is such that it can exaggerate something of no importance to great significance human experience shows that simple things brooded over and exaggerated have become cause of great mix-ups in life again in mind one can reduce the importance of something which is of great value the mind can worry about things over which we have no control at all the mind plays a great role in human health the negative and ill thoughts can make us sick hence it is said a healthy mind in a healthy body the healing process is fast when thoughts are positive the dynamism of the mind can be compared to a driver who drives a vehicle the driver can steer the vehicle where he or she wants the dynamism of the mind is like the movement of a snake wherever the head of a snake goes the body follows the same movement in fact we cannot be anywhere else than where our thoughts are we have heard of the story of an eaglet living with a chicken once an eagle laid an egg in the nest of a chicken and flew away the mother hen hatched it the eaglet began to live with other chicks looking at the chicks the eaglet did what they did and it spent most of its life in this way time passed the eaglet became old one day an eagle flew over the nest of the chicken what is that asked the aging eagle in astonishment one of the chickens replied that is the eagle the proudest the strongest and the most magnificent of all the birds but you don't dream that you could be like that and so shackled by this thought the eagle lived and died thinking it was a chicken this is the power and dynamism of thought we have several examples from the scripture to prove this dynamism of the mind let me give an example from the very first book of the bible an example from the story of adam and eve the temptation of adam and eve is the paradigm of every temptation we are interested not so much the fact itself but the strategy of the snake 
Adam and Eve were enjoying the bliss of friendship with God, with the Creator. It aroused the envy of the devil. He, in the form of a serpent, approaches Eve to induce a thought that would lead her to sin. The snake convinces the woman that God is of double standard and fearful. The snake convinces Eve that God hid from her and her husband something. Something because he knows that if they ate the fruit of the tree in the midst of the garden, they would become like him. In other words, the Creator would be afraid of losing his power. It is interesting to note that the text of the Genesis says that after the speech of the serpent, the woman noticed, noticed a thing that she had never noticed before, that the fruit was more beautiful and desirable to behold. In other words, suggesting a wrong idea about God, the devil is also able to change the sensory capacity of evil. What seemed something common and ordinary becomes now essential. This is again the power and dynamism of human mind. So the conclusion is, if you have good and constructive thoughts, and if you have good and constructive attitudes in your mind, you will save your life.